Since the American Civil War, only 3,515 Americans have been awarded the Medal of Honor. It is the highest decoration in the U.S. military. And today, we are going to be discussing one specific recipient of the Medal of Honor. The medic who held back an entire Japanese bonsai attack single-handedly. The dentist of death, the machine-gunning medic, Benjamin L. Solomon. I'm Chris Valenti, and this is Unsung Heroes. See, Benjamin Lewis Solomon was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to a Jewish family in 1914. Now, growing up, he was very heavily involved with the Boy Scouts, and he eventually attends the University of Southern California, where he attends dental school and ends up graduating in 1937. He eventually opens up his own dental practice. However, Everything that Benjamin knew about life was soon going to change because three years later in 1940, he ends up getting drafted into the U.S. Army and he begins his training as an infantry private. Now, it is important to talk about an overlooked aspect of war, a soldier's dental health. See, as you may know, a toothache can become excruciating pain. Now, combine the conditions of World War II with the lack of proper hygiene on the front lines, and a real bad toothache can render a soldier completely incapable of completing their duties. See, that is where our boy Benny Saal comes in. In 1942, two years into training, Solomon is told that he will serve as an officer in the Army Dental Corps, and he's commissioned the rank of First Lieutenant, the 105th Infantry Regiment, 27th Infantry Division. Two years later, in 1944, he's been promoted to the rank of Captain. In June of 1944, Solomon gets his first taste of combat in Saipan. Now, after realizing that there was very little dental work to be done, he volunteers to replace a wounded combat surgeon on the front lines. Selfless guy. Now, next thing you know, Solomon is in charge of an aid tent that is merely 50 yards from the front line with the ocean to their back, so no chance of retreating. Now, the Americans have been quite successful in their previous assault, and Solomon was dealing with the wounded in the aid tent, but the Americans were recuperating from the last assault. They did not have their guard up, and at the same time, the Japanese were amassing the largest assault in the entire Pacific campaign. 5,000 Japanese were preparing for this bonsai charge, swords and bayonets in hand, no plan on retreating. In a matter of seconds, the quiet calm of the previous fight had turned into complete and utter chaos. The Japanese were not going to fall back. Now, there's intense fighting going on outside of the tent, but Solomon keeps on tending to the wounded. That is his job. But the next thing you know, he looks outside of the tent and he sees two Japanese soldiers bayoneting helpless American wounded soldiers on stretchers. Now, Solomon, Solomon took that one personally. So he picks up an M1 Garand and dispatches those two Japanese soldiers. They're down. They're dead. He starts running back to the tent before he starts hearing behind him more Japanese screaming. He turns around. There's two more Japanese trying to charge into the tent again. Bang, bang, Solomon dispatches those two. And he tries to attend to the wounded, but that's when he notices four more Japanese soldiers crawling in from all sides underneath the tent. Now, fearing for his patients' lives, he kicks into gear. Solomon runs over to one of the first soldiers and kicks a knife out of his hand before bang, bang, two to the head. He turns over behind him and he sees another one crawling underneath. Bang shoots him dead. Now, the third one manages to rush up behind Solomon. Solomon withdraws his bayonet and dispatches the enemy soldier. But the fourth Japanese soldier manages to engage Solomon in some intense hand-to-hand -hand combat. And it's going on for a while. But Solomon manages to get the butt of his rifle and smack the Japanese soldier in the stomach, stunning him for maybe a second. Now, during that window, another Another wounded American soldier pulls out a sidearm, the trusty M1911, and puts 245 ACP into that Japanese soldier's chest, and he's down. But Solomon understands the defense is not going to hold. Now, Solomon realized that the defense was not going to be able to hold, so he decides to order the immediate evacuation of all of his patients while he would stay behind and give them time to retreat. The last thing that Solomon is reported to have said was, I'll hold them off until you get them to safety. See you later. 
Solomon then goes outside of the tent and mans a machine gun and starts sending out countless rounds towards the enemy. He relocates the MG four times during this defense. He ends up taking multiple bullet wounds, but he doesn't stop. He sacrifices his life for the lives of his men. Now, a few days later, when the U.S. Army ends up retaking that position, they found Solomon's body with 98 dead Japanese soldiers surrounding him. He had been shot 24 times before he eventually fell. Now the thing is, the Japanese, they didn't like how this American was able to hold up such a defense. So they kept on shooting and bayoneting his body even after he was down, just completely mutilating it, making it almost unrecognizable. He was 29 years old. Now, due to a misinterpretation of the Geneva Convention, Benjamin Solomon was not properly recognized for his heroism. You see, the Geneva Convention states that medical personnel may not use weapons in battle. However, that only applies to offensive situations. Now see, since Solomon was clearly acting in defense of himself and of his patients, he did not violate any of the rules of the Geneva Convention. So he was eventually awarded the Medal of Honor in 2002, 58 years after his death. Well, some things are better late than never. If you made it this far, thank you for watching, and make sure you hit the subscribe button below and click the bell for notifications. We'll see you next week on Unsung Heroes. Peace out. <laughs>